Hi guys, my name is Peter. Welcome to the channel. Welcome uh, to the part four of our $65 convertible rebuild. In this episode, uh, we will uh, plus the weld uh, the inner fender liner and the uh, bumper itself, and also uh, the fender is back from the paint. So maybe we will get the whole front end assembled back together so let's take a look at the, the uh, fender i think it looks amazing and here we have a fender i don't know how well it will be shown on the camera but this thing looks perfect it's spotless the paint job is really nice and as you can see uh, the paint is metallic uh, this paint is really nice uh, we will hopefully put the fender uh, today on um, the car but now uh, let's get the plastic welder uh, the uh, tarp from uh, the trunk and weld uh, the broken pieces of uh, that bumper so this is my uh, plastic welder it contains of uh, this unit which is uh, the uh, compressor and we have uh, regulators for the amount of air which is blown through uh, the hose here and this is uh, controlling the heater inside uh, this, uh, this gun and uh, through this little nozzle it, it shoots uh, the amount of air you set on the machine and uh, you just simply heat uh, the, the plastic you want to weld together and you're adding uh, the material you want uh, to add and to embed uh, the added material into the original one I have these uh, dentist's tools uh, and I just uh, use these tips and embed uh, the uh, adding material to to that. Uh, here I have my Dremel tool with this little uh, mail on the top and uh, I used to when I repair a crack or something like that I used to take this and uh, cut a groove uh, through the crack because uh, the added material is a triangle shape and that way it will line up with uh, the seam I want to uh, weld so uh, I will uh, get the tarp ready and the, the bumper and we will try to weld uh, these little pieces that are broken of it here I have the weld rods as you can see I have only two materials one is PP which stands for polypropylene and one is ABS uh, which stands for um, I don't know and uh, I'm certain that the bumper will be made of a uh, different type of plastic so I will not use those and we will have to just gobble this thing back together so here we have the bumper uh, when I dismantled this car uh, this piece fell off uh, from the inside of the bumper and I can't see a place where it should be because uh, this is fairly the same color as this car no it's it's not the same color it's it doesn't have those flakes in the paint it's not metallic as so this is the piece of the car that hit it i suppose because uh, this bumper has paint only on this midsection and on this front uh, i'm sorry on this uh, upper section right here and uh, there is no uh, piece missing on those sections so i guess this must be been uh, from the car that hit it so yeah two black cars met each other i wonder who win so and i decided uh, when i was um, carrying this um, fender here uh, i mean um, bumper i'm sorry that i will uh, make my first time uh, paint job on it because uh, the paint on the top is flaking off everywhere uh, it's not only only on the top 
it's also here on the bottom as you can see this painting is coming off and it's coming off everywhere this this uh, quarter this quarter is scraped so I think uh, I will dismantle the whole bumper and we will repaint it I'm I thinking about repainting it uh, even with those um, area that were unpainted originally and um, it will be uh, a rattle can paint job so it will not be of any any quality so um, I never did that in the past so I hope uh, it will turn out semi semi uh, acceptable I guess so now I will flip uh, the bumper around and I will look for the type of plastic because I look already on this uh, piece that we have to weld in and this is uh, polypropylene, this is PP. Uh, if the bumper is PP also, it will be a huge win for me. So I will flip it around on its back, uh, on its front I guess, and I will look for the plastic uh, marking. So right here we have the marking of uh, this bumper. Uh, it's PE that stands for polyethylene. I don't have a polyethylene uh, right now so I will have to weld it with what I have or I will wait a couple days and I will get the, uh, the PE plastic. But these inner fender liners are PP so we can we can weld those. We have two cracks right here. We will weld those cracks and we are we will be one step closer to victory. When you are welding a crack uh, to stop it's this crack from spreading anywhere else what you want to do is to drill a hole uh, at the end of the crack that way you relieve the stress of the material and you stop it from cracking So now, once I have uh, these cracks uh, s drilled out, I will uh, do a taper on the crack itself. And uh, I'm doing that because uh, the, as I said, uh, the adding material is uh, triangle shaped, so it will help me to embed the material to uh, the inner fender liner itself. When you are working with the power equipment or power tools always wear your eye protection this thing spits out uh, little pieces of uh, molten plastic and you don't want to land it in your eyes so uh, we have the crack enlarged so now uh, i will fire up the uh, compressor here and we will be adding uh, this uh, plastic and uh, blowing air from this direction and pushing uh, this plastic into the crack and into the groove we made uh, with the Dremel. So I will uh, let it warm up. I will plug it in. And here is the temperature uh, which I set. It, it's set for 13. Uh, I'm sorry, 318 uh, degrees Celsius, 
I will let it uh, heat up a little more and then we will weld. So it's not the prettiest thing in the world, but it will hold, I hope. Uh, I will let it cool off and we will do the same thing from the other side. Since I'm waiting for uh, this to cool down and I don't have the paint, the sandpaper uh, or the proper plastic to weld uh, this bumper, what I think I should do is to start a disassembly of uh, this bumper like uh, taking out the fog lights, the grails and uh, the tag uh, holder right here so Once you know how to approach things, uh, they will become much easier. So uh, these uh, these uh, bolts right here were frozen in time and place, mainly that place, and uh, they needed to be gently tapped out. And by gently, I mean by brute force. Uh, these, uh, I guess, holders or these parts of the fog light are rusted so I will uh, disassemble them as uh, this one here pulled uh, pull this uh, uh, this one even broke off wow I didn't expect that so yeah I will have to figure something out with it uh, I will uh, send them down paint them uh, black also and I want to uh, wrap uh, these lenses in uh, yellow wrap because uh, here in Czech Republic or at Europe generally you can have the fog lights uh, in uh, yellow color so I will I think uh, the black and yellow uh, will make this uh, car stand out and black and yellow is also a song from Wiz Khalifa if I'm not uh, mistaken so Black and yellow, black and yellow. We have public holidays today at Czech Republic. And that means I can get my paint and all that good stuff from the store because it's state mandated that the bigger stores are closed down for the state holiday, for the public holiday, I mean. The other day I went to the store and I wanted to get the paint mixed into the rail cans. And I wanted to buy the eccentric sender to send all the remnants of the paint from this bumper. But uh, they told me that I cannot mix my paint into the rail can until I have my business license with them. I said yes, I will register my business and I thought that it will be a two minute process but it turned out I have to wait a couple of days so tomorrow I hopefully will get the paint for this bumper I will buy the sander and we will send and paint this bumper I count that this will be the most expensive paint job ever because I can ship this to my paint guy and get it painted for 100 bucks. The spray cans, I think I will use at least three of three cans of paint. 
they will cost like 20 bucks a pop so that means 60 bucks for paint then we have to buy primer sand discs and the clear coat so with the sander this bumper will be like 250 bucks but I don't care because probably uh, what we will be doing in upcoming videos we will be removing the corrosion from the Passat so I want to learn how to paint and all that stuff so I snatched some sandpaper from home and I will start on scuffing this bumper and removing the paint I will not bore you with that process and I will turn back on when this bumper is sanded and ready for primer apart from the sanding my today goal is also to weld these uh, imperfections on this bumper I went ahead and I ordered the proper material for this bumper but unfortunately I bought a thicker gauge than I should bought uh, the thick always doesn't mean bad but in this case it will uh, let's say not ease my work because the thicker material needs more heat to heat up and it's thicker than this material so that means this material will heat up more quickly than the added material so that's not good for your welding I have crack here those three holders on the bottom that one holder which is right here to the other side and also crack on one of those holders for the fog lights so I will weld those and I will show you the result uh, I'm sorry that I didn't uh, record um, any of the painting process um, I had this camera on time-lapse and it was showing uh, that it's recording but I forgot that I don't have a SD card insert and the uh, camera didn't uh, say that I have so I recorded a time-lapse video of me sending this down without an SD card so I don't have the footage I went ahead and I bought uh, this uh, vibration sander and um, we sent the whole bumper I decided to paint uh, the parts that weren't painted originally and uh, I was told to use a black primer we will be using a black paint but maybe the paint uh, has some issues with the coverage and the guy told me that they have a um, note from the manufacturer of the paint that I should use a black primer so I wasted money on three cans of white primer and, and then I used just one can of uh, this black primer so uh, now I will uh, wet sand it down and then we will dry for the paint and we will paint it uh, the color it should be scuffed it with the end 800 grit uh, wash it twice and um, then I uh, wipe it down with uh, clean paper towels and um, hose it down with the degreaser 
and uh, blew it out with the air gun so I think we are ready for the first layer of paint I've got my paint right here it's pre-filled color matched hopefully I will uh, shake it down properly and then I will apply a slight coat first slight coat of the paint then let it uh, dry for 30 minutes second coat third coat and then two coats of um, clear coat all right so this is where we at after two coats of paint I noticed that this uh, paint has a little bit less um, I should say a much less metallic flakes in it than uh, the original one had so I think that should be expected because uh, the nozzle on this is much smaller than on your paint gun I guess so that's why maybe didn't put so much flakes in it so let's apply the third coat and then two coats of clear coat final result I can tell right now that it is not the same color as the fender is but um, uh, the color code on the fender is MOXC and the color code on this is M1XC they couldn't mix me the MOXC so this color is a little bit different but we'll see uh, when we will put the car back together how it all looks how it all meshes together and I will also buff the whole car so but I think it look better uh, without those scratches and peeling paint and all that stuff so I will transport it to the car and uh, if my battery will stay at least a little charged I will do a time lapse of putting the front clip together and then the car will need just three la last uh, upgrades or repairs the roof needs work polish and register it so let's get this uh, piece back to the big shop and work on the front got this awesome cardboard uh, which I got from my friends that they have a mechanic shop if you watch no board is out uh, he has his employee the Jose and uh, he's also obsessed with cardboard <laughs> as me so this used to store a hood for some kind of uh, weed up and now will I use it uh, as uh, my work desk here so I don't scratch the bumper and the fender so I will start with uh, the fender because um, I think I can get easier to the bolts and then I will move on to uh, the bumper uh, I have to remove the wheels for uh, to bumper go in and um, that's what I will do I will install the fender then the bumper and tighten everything back together and I think um, the front end will be finished after we uh, solve the issue with uh, the emblem, hood emblem that I broke and uh, what else, what else yeah and I want to uh, coat the fog lights in, in yellow uh, wrap so 
but that I can do uh, in, uh, any time. So, all right, we've got a fender on. I didn't film uh, the process of putting it on because uh, here we have bad lighting, as you can see now. Uh, we have sl some slight issues with uh, this fender, and I will show you what uh, these issues are. Um, the gaps are good all the way through, probably the same. The door gaps are good. Let me pop the hood real quick. The minor issue we have is this being from the newer model. It was held on by two rivets. Um, the older one is held on with one rivet here and bolt here. So we don't have it bolted right now. But this will, this I will uh, probably solve with uh, the rivet or I will drill the bigger hole for uh, the bolt. It was slightly uh, different shaped in this area. Right here you can see how is this older shaped and here we have the, the rivet and the bolt. And here we have two rivets and this is shaped a little bit different. The older one is straight here and doesn't have this uh, this groove but uh, the most annoying issue we are having right now is this hole for the turn signal here is the turn signal that should uh, be on this car and this hole is bigger than this turn signal is and this is the turn signal that should be on this uh, type of fender. I don't know how I will uh, tackle this problem yet, but uh, I will have to somehow because I don't want to have uh, one of uh, this clear type and one of this uh, type. Um, and I like this one better. So we will have to solve that issue somehow. And now I guess we can move on to the bumper. I sprayed uh, this fog light trim with a paint and now I will install these fog light brackets into the bumper. While I'm waiting for paint to dry on those little bolts for the fog light. I want to uh, ask you uh, if you like uh, my videos, please interact uh, with them in any way likes, comments, subscribes, uh, because YouTube will then push my videos to other people. And um, that happened uh, this one time I watched uh, the village run, the Opel GT's video. I don't know if you watched that, probably you do. It's a really good video, they have a camera crew in there, so uh, it's a pretty successful video. And uh, I watched that video and my video was posted next to uh, that um, Opel GT video, so I get like I got like 10,000 or 30,000 impressions on uh, that video, but unfortunately, it was the ER5 video, which is not uh, one of my greatest. Um, I was uh, depressed on that video, and it's it's getting stored on that video. So, if you want to support me, go down, subscribe, like, leave a nice comment. I really appreciate it. I've got this thing all buttoned up up front. The uh, things that are missing are the turn signal, the molding, the inner fender liners, and of course the buff the whole car. But what do you think? How does it look? I think it looks good. So there is more to come on this little Peugeot. So don't forget to go down, 
subscribe, like, leave a comment, it really helps me and I appreciate it. Thanks for watching, thanks to all my subscribers and have a nice day, I'm out of here, be safe out there, bye.